the sequel to The Nun just landed? Find out what I thought about the film right now. All right, everybody, The Nun, the second installment from the James Wan Conjuring franchise is releasing this weekend, and I had a chance to see it yesterday. Uh, I wanted to give some time for everything to gel, but a little bit about me. I am a working line producer and award-winning writer as well as a comic book writer and novelist. So I come from that point of view when I review things. So let's talk about it right now. Um, the first Nun film was not really well received. Uh, I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes, and it was definitely not fresh. <laughs> but the character has such a great look. I mean, it is a very original character. I have to give it that, and I was one of those people that did not care for the first movie. Uh, I thought it was a letdown for sure, and here we are. Uh, I think it was 2018, 2019, so it's been a few years since the uh, the last movie, and we do have a lot of the characters returning. So, of course, we have Tessa Famia, uh, who is Vera Famia's sister, so she is the one that that plays in the other Conjuring films with Patrick Wilson. And, of course, I'm pretty sure that's how she got the job. <laughs> Not that Tessa is a bad actress at any sense, though. No, that, that family is full of talent. So I'm just saying that there's a little nepotism going on. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, Jonas Plaque, he, uh, I think he's French, uh, he uh, returns as Frenchy. Uh, Maurice, in this case, nobody really calls him Frenchie in this case anymore. Uh, Storm Reed uh, is uh, basically joins Tessa uh, in this fight against the nun, so she is like the new recruit, uh, and this all takes place in the fifties. And she is, uh, or she's from Wrinkle in Time and and Suicide Squad, Visible uh, Visible. Woman or whatever else, visible man. Yeah, she's gotten a few. Uh, I thought she was from Euphoria. Yeah, she is. She uh, did 13 episodes of Euphoria as well. So that's probably where they took her from because Euphoria is an actual big show. So they said, oh, we got somebody from Euphoria in there. Because Wrinkle in Time didn't do well. but uh, And it was great, great, great to see Anna Popowell show back up. I have not seen her since Rain. Uh, she, of course, is from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, uh, Caspian, and all the other. Uh, Narnia stuff. She is she's great, and I, I wish she was doing more. Uh, but it was great for it to see her show up. Uh, so, yep. And then we have Bonnie Aaron show back up as you know the character that pretty much made her famous. I don't think she's really done much otherwise. So uh, we have a director here of Michael Chavez. The only really directing he's done is for the Conjuring films. So he was given a chance to do some of the Conjuring stuff. Uh, and now, you know, he's basically continuing, but he hasn't really done anything outside of Conjuring. So I really have no complaint with the directing itself. I thought the directing was fine because the performances are all good. Uh, I, in other words, nobody came off as over the top. Nobody came off. They, everybody took the, their job very seriously. And so even the, all the girls that played all the students in the school all came out very, very well. Um, again, I have no complaints on any of that. My complaints are with the writing. So we have such a great, great character and a great foil with Tessa. She's, she's a, a well likable, she's a likable character in the film, but yet the film comes off flat without any depth, dimension, internal struggle or anything. And two of the guys are like Siamese twins. So you have three writers on here. Uh, you have Ian Goldberg and Richard Naning. Naying, uh, and they're like Siamese twins. Everything that they, they work on is worked on together. So they do, they're writer producers. They do a lot of producing too. Uh, Akila Cooper is the standout for the writing side. He has a lot more credits than the other guys. Uh, he did Megan, which was very good. 
Uh, he did some stuff for Luke Cage. He did Malignant. I really like Malignant. I know a lot of people didn't like Malignant, but I liked it. Um, he's done six. He's done a lot of TV. Uh, Magic Order. He's done Strange. He's had ten episodes of Strange New Worlds. Uh, Jupiter's Legacy, which is uh, also good. He did that. That's a lot of the producing stuff he did. Uh, and he also um, wrote, as I said, wrote uh, Megan and Malignant, Jupiter's Legacy, uh, Hellfest. Actually, I liked Hellfest. <laughs> I gotta watch that one again. Uh, American Horror Story, Grimm, so, and Witch of the Beast uh, of East End, which I have not seen. So, he, he has more credits than the other guys. But again, they're both, they're all writer-producers. So, what I, here's, so, let's go into what I liked, <laughs> real quick. I'm not gonna really, I'm gonna go into the spoilers, but I'm gonna make an announcement before I go into spoilers. So, this will be all non-spoiler up till the very end. I, and I just want to point out a couple of things. So we have great settings. The settings are off the chart. They're very interesting. The little castle that they were in uh, is really cool. Uh, the lighting, the DP did a good job with that. Although there was, a, I felt there was a lot of haze. Everything was very hazy, so it wasn't very crisp. And I'm not sure if that was the film stock that they used or they were continuously using, you know, hazers throughout the entire thing that gave it that weird that weird look. So we have good settings, we have a good DP, we have good acting, we had a couple of good jump scares. Some of the stuff that you saw in the trailer was very interesting, like the magazines all going when she's like in her um, in her vision uh, and stuff to that effect. So there was some good use of the jump scare situation. And again, you have the makeup on the main character looks great. The makeup and wardrobe is great. She's a very interesting looking character. And here we're introduced to St. Lucy. I haven't looked it up to see if it was a real saint or not, but she was the patron of the blind because she didn't burn. So they went to burn her at the stake. She didn't burn and they cut out her eyes. So she was blinded. And they use that story to tell the rest of the story. The father from the first film has died. And Irene has put herself into a regular nunnery. And then she's called upon uh, to fight Balak again. But here's the problem. We don't go into Valak at all. We go. We know nothing about her or his. I don't know if the demon is a he or him. I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm just gonna say him, even though it's you know, it's in the nun. Valak is uh, so it's, it's kind of a a shapeshifter kind of thing. So I like how they connected the first two movies together, or the first movie to the second. I liked how they did that. It made a lot of sense. Although I found out later that the Warrens, that they just, that they took a plot line from the Warrens by doing what they did. So I guess whatever the real connection is, supposedly then to the nun and to the Warrens and the Conjuring has now been eliminated. Uh, so, uh, and there is a post credit sequence there. So I love the look and feel. I love the costumes. I like the fifties, you know, type of, uh, genre. So all that was great. A little bit of the jump stuff, that, but for some reason they just will not go into the background of the nun. They will not go into the, why is it the nun? You know, if it's a demon, why did it choose this, you know, this particular form? Right, they they mention it in one of the things, but they don't say why. We don't get see a flashback of what happened. We don't see any of this. What what is the demon after? What's their mode? What's the motivation? It's looking for the for the eyes of Saint Lucy. Why? What? It never. It, it's there's never any end goal to the demon. That, that we have no idea. How does that connect to Irene? Why is Irene having these visions? Why, you know, why are they connected in some way? We don't, we don't ever find out. They don't ever delve into it. 
So, and that's why the film is flat because there's no, you know, craters or, or hills to this thing because it's just, okay, we have to get the demon. That's it. That's it. And, you know, then we get some weird stuff with the devil. It was weird. I don't understand that. We have a little Indiana Jones piece in there. Uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of all over the place. And it, these writers should know better. I mean, you have three guys that know how to produce and they know how to write. But I don't understand why can't they can't put those things together to make a decent script for this particular character. I would love to write for this particular character. I think the character is awesome looking. And we just don't get, we don't get the oomph out of it. When we leave the theater, it's just like, eh, whatever. And that's not how I wanted to feel when I left this. I was giving this another chance because uh, I didn't like the first one, but I loved the character. And I loved the Warrens, and I loved the Conjuring universe, and all that stuff. And I really wanted to love this. And there's just nothing to love. That's the unfortunate piece. So I, I want to go into spoilers a little bit here, but before I do, uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, I am trying to grow the channel out, so if you can support it, uh, great. Just give me that thumbs up and click the little belly. Uh, so, and I want to go into spoilers right now. So if you haven't seen the film, then leave it, and you can watch my last two minutes uh, after you watch the, the movie. All right. So I'm going to go into spoilers in three, two, one. Click me off or don't. Okay. All right. So a little bit of spoilers. I did not like the setup for, I think that she used the ball of Christ in the first movie to banish the, uh, the Valak character, the Valak demon. And here they did it again. All she did was bless the wine and boom, it was all over. I think, see, so in the true story, I guess the Warrens, were the ones that exercised Maurice. They took that away because the the, the demon was banished, unless the, she still has a connection with Maurice during this period of time, which may be possible. I don't know. But I almost wish that Maurice died, but I guess because there's that true story involving them, they kept her alive. But uh, so I didn't... I didn't like that. I kind of wish that Maurice died or was just sacrificed or went crazy or something instead of going, going back to normal. I, I, I felt I felt that it was too clean for what was everything that was going on. Um, I didn't understand how the woman that the headmaster or whatever else was killed and then she showed back up. Uh, I didn't understand that, you know, unless they had mentioned that her body was gone and she just you know came back to the thing but she was you know dead the whole thing with the devil coming off the stained glass i didn't understand that at all and the demon the, you know the devil looked cool but he kept running at the doors the entire time <laughs> he looked like he was going fast but they were able to close the door on him every time I don't know. I didn't really like that either. Um, there was a lot of stuff that just didn't make any sense, didn't line up. And again, it was just that flat line of just really nothing happening that was personal to the, the characters. And I really wished it was something personal rather than, you know, I want the eyes of St. Lucy for God knows what reason. And they get destroyed anyway. So I, I don't know. Whatever. Uh not happy with this film. I was, I was going to rate it, which I probably should have done before I clicked off of the non-spoilers. Uh, but if I was going to rate it, it's probably a four or five out of ten. It's very mid. Very mid. So uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, as I said. And let me plug my own stuff here. Uh, remember, I have my book, Tales of Ravenor, The Iron Witch, The Story of Threya. And uh, we have some great characters in here from different cultures. Uh, I kind of made like a mismatch fantasy uh, type of thing where I have different cultures all in there. We have Greek and, and Asian and uh, Egyptian and all that stuff. So we have all different gods and stuff like that. Uh, my uh, sci-fi uh, 
graphic novel based on my four book series. We have plenty of aliens and space battle and sword fights and all that stuff in there. It's, uh, we got a good twist in there too, which most people do not see coming. And uh, then I have my vampire mob in the 50s. I am still working on the Kickstarter for this, although I haven't had time in the last couple of days. All right. Uh, so look for that. Uh, I'll definitely be announcing that when it launches. So that's it for me. Thank you again so much for watching and supporting. I really appreciate every single one of you and your comments. Uh, you know, I, I tend to, you know, read everything that you guys comment below and you'll see me like them or, you know, respond to them. All right. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.